Let me, I'll start with a, a shorter duration time frame chart here. I, one of the things that I was looking at uh, earlier this week was, uh, really at the beginning of this week was a couple of things. Well, we had the rising wedge also in Ethereum and we were striking resistance at the, the 200 six hour moving average, which has been pertinent if you go back further in the chart in terms of resistance. And we also had a, a bearish momentum divergence at that high uh, on July 7th. So that from that basis, I began watching, looking for, for a potential breakdown. And then of course we had that breakdown yesterday. Now I saw, I don't know if it's been confirmed by Ethereum or not, but there was rumors that the, del the update was delayed until August. At least that's what I, that I had written. I mean I believe that the, the the vote is coming today. Today they're actually deciding because uh, there was a developer who actually proposed that the that the update will come on August fourth. But today they're basically voting on it, and today we'll get the news. Okay. Yeah. So we had you know yesterday just taking it from a technical perspective, uh, we can't that was off the fifty day moving average to break. We had a very you know a, a notable decline for Ethereum almost nine percent yesterday. So that confirms the break from the rising wedge pattern. Uh, really, now we run into an area of, of major support that's represented by a trifecta of levels. One is the 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 importance of the February high at two thousand. 2041, which comes in just at that dotted line. Then we have the 200 day simple moving average comes in about 2000. And then you have the 2020 trend line, which comes in about 19, 1940. So this, this, this maybe the, the vote today or, or something could be a catalyst to take us below there. Otherwise, I wouldn't be surprised to see Ethereum actually pause here and maybe we'll uh, try to attempt some type of bounce with over the next couple of days but on on a larger term basis if you take a look at it from a weekly perspective and and looking at what is taking place with a lot of the altcoins is they're testing or actually are underneath the 50 50 week simple moving average so if we do break the 2020 trend line and close below there preferably on a weekly basis i would not be surprised if we do test uh, 1,350, which is the 50 week simple moving average. On the upside, really, it, you know, because over on the upside, we have a, a dominant descending triangle formation. And one of the things that stands out, first of all, about this is that this particular leg up fell short of the, of the upper trend line, which is a sign of waning momentum within the context of the triangle. So it would take, for me, it would take a daily close above the upper trend line of the triangle, which let's give or take 2,600 at this point to, for me to be thinking about a medium term uh, allocation of capital to Ethereum at this point. I think that if you're a day trader, I think you, you could possibly be trading against this level today uh, or any more weakness that, that develops during the day or tomorrow. Otherwise, you know, like Bitcoin, I would be, be prefer to be on the sidelines yeah i, I agree 100 percent with you sheldon like i don't like right now it's i mean i'm getting a buy signal by the td sequential indicator on the four hour chart but to me from a from a day for me from a longer time perspective it all depends on on whether that 200 day moving average is going to be able to hold of course for day traders, as you said, right, that's a that's a key point to go long right there at around two thousand dollars, right, because it kind of like also coincides with the twenty twenty trend line, and you will potentially be targeting first the the fifty day moving average and then the the descending trend line on you know on top of the of the prices right now, but uh, once again, um, you know the volume is is really dry. Uh, maybe the, the news about the, the upcoming hard fork actually uh, being announced for October 4th could, you know, from a fundamental perspective, help uh, prices go up, you know, as, as it would like bring some FOMO into, into this. But other than that, uh, it's, just a, it's just a waiting game right now for, for most of these cryptocurrencies. So yeah, that, that's that's basically my, my take on, on on Ethereum. I don't know if you Akash are looking at something different from a lower time perspective. 
I'm um, kind of uh, in line with what Sheldon is saying. Let me just share my screen. Right, so I was expecting this uh, rising waste to uh, fall apart somewhere over here, but it did not. It swept above these swing highs and even the swing high, I mean, uh, the 50 FIP and then the swing high over here. Uh, and now I was being optimistic and expecting, and I'm still expecting it to reverse here, which kind of falls in line with what Sheldon was saying, uh, this level. Uh, but considering how Bitcoin is going, I think we might get a, a breakdown of this demand barrier and probably hit the actual theoretical uh, target for it, which is 1909. And then since I'm bullish in Bitcoin as well, I'm expecting it to uh, go higher. Uh, and the same reasons apply here as well. I'm looking at a uh, retest of uh, 3K. Okay, okay. So basically, uh, you are potentially, I mean, you're seeing the potential that this has to actually break below uh, kind of like $2,000 and go all the way down to kind of like 1900 right? And from that point, since you're a little bit bullish on, on Bitcoin, right, you, we could have that, uh, that rebound as well across the entire complex, not only in Bitcoin, but also the same thing reflect to, to Ethereum. And basically tag the three thousand dollar resistance barrier, right? Perfect, exactly. Right. So uh, again, like we, either, we, if we break down this demand zone, we come down here and then we reverse, or we reverse from right here. Either of the two scenarios. What, what will get you bearish on Ethereum? Like, what price level are you looking at that could invalidate uh, the whole thing that you're looking at right now? Uh, probably like a a break below the range low. Uh, if you see a wick like this, then no, I'm not going to be better. But uh, if we see a substantial move below it, like for example, this was, okay, we don't have a substantial. Yeah, if I see something like this happening down there, then maybe, yes, we, we're probably going to move higher. But considering how I'm bullish on both Bit on Bitcoin, I don't think we will see this happen. Uh, but the only scenario where I could see it go below this is since Ethereum is correlated to Bitcoin and Ethereum, uh, the percentage moves like for now, let me just check this out. So this is approximately 15% downswing, whereas for Bitcoin, it's just 8%, right? So this is what I've been keeping uh, an eye on. Uh, so if Bitcoin slides only 8%, Ethereum is going down 15%, right? So in that mm -hmm. sense, uh, for Bitcoin to come down here, uh, we might see Ethereum go down all the way up to this point and then reverse, right? And in a highly bearish case, yes, we could see it uh, sweep at the range low, which is around 1700. I see, I see. Interesting. But I'm not turning bearish then, on any of the top two points right now. Yeah, yeah, like... Um... I, I gotta say that I, next week I'm getting a buy signal on a couple of, of assets, right? Which usually whenever you get, you know, some buy, I mean, the whole thing is correlated. So usually when you get some buy signals on different assets that you're actually, that the whole, you know, crypto, crypto Twitter is not paying attention to, then the whole uh, thing tends to move that way, right? Uh, the, the only thing that I'm, that I'm a little bit worried about is that everybody is waiting for that rebound, you know? Uh, too many people got caught up into, into the hype Right, I have family members, friends, everybody was, you know, on the hype. Oh, I'm becoming a millionaire now that I invested in, in Bitcoin. Oh, oh, this and that, right? And then when the big drop it came, now nobody's talking about it, right? Now everybody wants to exit their holdings because like most people bought around the, the highs. That's the, that's the that's my main point of concerns regarding, you know, a potential rebound that people are actually waiting for. But other than that, like, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see, you know, we'll have to wait and see if the moment comes where this, uh, where Ethereum in particular actually is able to rebound from 2000 or from 1900, which is kind of where the 200 day moving average is. I believe that a break below that level, a, a break below 1850 or 1800, let's put it that way. Uh, mm -hmm. I believe that that's basically goodbye. You know, uh, if, if that were to happen, then I'm targeting, yeah, $1,400 next. Um, Interesting. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, let, let's see. Let's see if we actually get that rebound because, because once again, like that 200 uh, day moving average have been able to hold for a little while in there. So a potential yeah. rebound from that level could potentially see it rise to the 50 day moving average, which I believe is it's around 2,300 where you have the 50 uh, Fibonacci level. 2,350. Yep. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Exactly right there. And then, of course, if we're able to close above that level, then a potential rise to 3,000 seems, seems reasonable. Or at least uh, 2,900, you know, which uh, kind of like coincides with the previous highs that we saw around uh, May 24th and, and all of that, you know. But, uh, yeah.